What's going on, everyone, from Overtime Heroics? My name is Dane Podolsky, and I'm joined here with Justin, the guitar hero, James, who is currently on the treadmill and prepared to make his MMA at Total Warrior Combat on February 5th against Carl Deaton III. First off, Justin James, how have you been? How's training been going? Hey, man, you know, uh, I had no surgery right after my last fight. I took six months off, uh, kind of physically, get, trying to get physically and mentally rejuvenated, remotivated. Uh, came back, this, uh, this matchup kind of fell in my lap uh, at a, kind of a weird time uh, back in, when was it, November. And I've been training ever since. I feel great. Um, I'm in great shape. I'm light. I'm ready to slap Carl Deaton across the face. Did it? Did you end up taking time off after the last win and at, or sorry, after the last fight? And at what point did you sort of get back into training and being, you know, motivated? You know, uh, well, I had no surgery immediately after. Not that uh, Charles Rosa didn't didn't break my nose or anything. Um, it was broken prior, uh, and the recovery time was like four months. Uh, I probably got back. I probably got back into the gym uh, probably like October, early. No, probably early November. I think is when I got cleared. Uh, but I wasn't really training hard till probably December. Did what was the conversation like when the UFC cut you? Did you did they give you a call or did you just find out on social media? Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually kind of a bummer. You know, it's, uh, it was on my birthday and uh, I was out on on uh, Lake Mead with a, a group of friends of mine. You know, celebrating my birthday. Manager called. He's like, "Hey, I got bad news. You know, UFC is gonna let you go. Uh, you know, they just want you to get a couple wins and they'll bring you right back." So. You know, it was unfortunate, but at the end of the day, it's a business, and I get it. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, I expected it. It's, I mean, I said it in my, my interviews and my podcast prior to the fight. If I lose this fight, I'm losing all my money. I'm going to lose my contract. Like I said, I lost the fight, lost my money, lost my contract. And now I'm in a rebuilding phase now, and I plan to be back in the UFC by the end of 2022. So I was going to ask, what's, you know, how active do you want to be this year, and is your plan to get back? you know, by the end of the year to the UFC? Uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm feeling good right now as long as I'm healthy. You know, same thing like when I was in the UFC. I fought in the UFC five times in one year. Uh, as long as I'm healthy, let's fucking go. I want to fight. You know, I'm getting older. I'm 32 years old. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know I, I, I mean, this, this next fight is almost, I have like, I have over 70 MMA fights. This will be my 25th pro fight. I had 47 amateur fights. So, you know, my body's, my body's worn. I want, to get, I want to get in and get as many fights as I can get in while I'm healthy because you never know. Fuck, I could drive home tonight, get in a car accident, never be able to fight again. So, you know, time, time to me is very valuable, and I want to make the most of the time I do have. Does being out of the UFC, does that motivate you, you know, even further to want to get back? Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense of, yeah, obviously everyone wants to get to the pinnacle of the biggest organization in the world. But I tell you what, at least at first, it was hard to get motivated to go fight for two thousand dollars when I've been fighting for twenty five grand the last couple of fights uh, to get to get you know a literally fucking ten percent or you know I'm getting paid ten percent you know essentially of what I've been getting paid you know my last couple of fights fucking sucks, but it is what it is, and unfortunately that's just the the road I'm on, and you know I, I got to take this road so I can get those big paydays back. Is there a betting line for a regional fight like this? Uh, no, there won't, there won't be a betting line, no. And you know what? And then I know people try to make side bets. Like when I fought Troy Lampson for the TWC a while back, you know, uh, you, can, you can look at some of my posts. Mm -hmm. I told him, I told Troy, I was like, hey, look, like, let's put our purse. It's only 2000 bucks. Like, fuck it. Let's just winner take all. And he's like, yeah, 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 let's do it. And then I beat him 50 to 45, and I've never heard from him since. And that was like six years ago. So I was like, this fucking sucks. Because <laughs> if, if I would have lost, I would have given him two grand. I would have given him my money. If you, if there was to be a betting line on this fight, would you double down bet and bound yourself again, or would you want to keep this? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I know Carl well. Uh, we were teammates. We we're training partners. Um, this guy's a piece of shit, man. It's uh, I'm so frustrated about it. <laughs> is, there, is there animosity between you guys now? Oh yeah, big time, man. This guy's a piece of shit. Like he can, he can make it. You know, here's the thing. I want to get clear right now. Is like. His, his manager, they're, they're trying to say that, oh, James is racist, and James brought Carl's family into this. No, no, no. Let's get this thing straight. Carl sends me a video of him wearing a coyote skin that I gave him as a gift, and his face is painted, and he's talking in – because he's Native American. He's talking in his 
whatever language, I don't, I don't even know what language it would be called. And it's not, I'm not slandering. I just don't know what it's called. And he sends me this video about how he's going to hurt me and whoop my ass. So I, my response to the video was, I'm going to slap his ass all the way back to his TP. Like he's bringing like, and everyone just fucking loses it. Like, Oh my God, James is racist. He's racist. I can't believe he said that. Like, I was like, what you called me and sent me a video of you being native American, you know, being, you know, proud of your culture. And I just kind of respond in a, in a playful way. And I'm racist. Go fuck yourself, dude. And then he, then he says in another video, he's like, I'm not worried about James. My sister hits harder than he does. So my response to that was, well, fuck, your sister hits harder than me. Shit, send me your number. Like, I want to meet this chick. Like, what's up? So he's like, oh, my God, you brought family into it. You're not a true athlete. You're a fucking piece of shit racist. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Anyways, dude, this guy's a piece of shit. He called me a year ago, and he's like, oh, I want to come to Extreme Couture and train. I know that's where you're having all your success. I was like, oh, dude, just like I have with everybody I fought, Eric Lozano contested this. I fought Eric Lozano a while back. I invited him to come train with me. We've trained together. We're friends. Same thing with Carl. <clears throat> you know, me and Carl, we, we train together. His head coach, Dennis Davis, has been my head coach since 2009. Uh, he trained for his whole PFL camp here. I trained for my UFC fight. He asked me for help, uh, you know, through his camp. Car Carl's a great training partner. He's a great fighter. He's very powerful. He's explosive. Well, then he does some fucking stupid shit, you know, at the gym, which I, I don't want to get into because it's his personal business, and I don't like to get on other people's personal business. But he does some fucking dumb high school shit at the gym and they kick him out of the gym and then I'm up deer hunting and I get a call from three different promoters. Motor Maria Sinclair called me, uh, Pete uh, uh, for TWC called me and then Mike Pidelli from WXC called me like, hey, you want to fight Carl Dean? I'm like, no, dude, Carl's my boy. Like, no, I, no, I'm good. And then the third one called or uh, then Pete fi finishes off. He's like, dude, this guy wants to fight you. I'm like, dude, I just trained with him like two weeks ago. What do you mean he wants to fight me? And, uh, yeah, dude, he just went on this big ramp about how I fucking suck as a fighter and how he's going to whoop my ass and blah, blah, blah. Dude, this guy's just purely obsessed with me. It's disgusting. He came to my gym. He was my coaches. And now he wants to fight me. He's just, you know what? I, I, I You know, fuck Carl Deaton, man. I, I wish him no good in his career. I wish him no good in anything. He's a fucking snake. He slithered his way into my gym. He slithered his way into my coaching staff, into my training camp. And then he, he feels that he found uh, 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 a chink in my armor. So he's going to be able to exploit that. Fuck that motherfucker. I want to embarrass him in front of his family and his whole tribe. Well, wow, lots to take in. So let me get straight. So he got kicked out of Extreme Couture? Or yeah, he is kicked out of Extreme Couture. I'm not going to say why, because it's not my business to say it's his business. And again, I don't like him, but I still respect him as a person, I guess. And if, I mean, if you want to know, like you can ask him, but he did some fucking stupid juvenile shit and he deserved to get kicked out. And yeah, he got kicked out in October. It's either October or November. And then I'm up deer hunting in November. And I have three promoters calling, oh, Carl's begging for this fight. He's begging for it. It's like, what? Fuck you, motherfucker. Ask me for help and then tell me you're going to end my career. Take food off my kid's plate. Fuck this motherfucker. So just, just so I'm clear, so he helped you with your fight for Charles Rosa, and you helped him for his fight in the PFL. He then well, I uh, you know, when I, say help, when I say help, I mean, we trained together. It wasn't like he specifically came to help me or I specifically came to help him, but, I mean, we trained together. You know, like, he was a part of my camp. I was a part of his camp when he was getting ready. So, but, yes. Okay, and then he got kicked out of Extreme Four, and right. once he got kicked out, he started calling you out, and that's when the spike yes. came. Yes, okay. Correct. Okay, a lot to take in. Um, I guess just sort of moving on from that is you're, you're back in Michigan from your fight. This is, you know, your hometown. Is that, like, how does that have an effect on this fight? You know, that's, that's, that's probably the only thing I'm excited about, about this fight. You know, again, I've had 75 MMA fights or almost 75 MMA fights. Even when I fought Troy Lamson, you know, him and I talk shit back and forth to each other. But the thing is this, Troy doesn't know, he doesn't know me. I didn't know him. We were selling a fight. You know what I mean? Like we, we, I was very respectful to him before and after still am. If I saw him, I'd say, what's up, but this is different, man. This is the first time in my career that I have animosity that I genuinely don't wish any good for my opponent, whether he wins or loses next Saturday from there on out, I, I wish him nothing, but nothing good. <laughs> uh, so, but back to your question, fighting Lansing, that's yeah, like I said, that's the only time. I mean, who knows, you know, even after I win, I get back to the UFC, 
the UFC might never come back to Detroit. So this could be the last time that, you know, my fans and family get to see me fight in my home state. So, you know, it's a big deal to me, win or lose. You know, I'm going out on my sword. And uh, I have so many family and friend, friends there supporting me. I have people, I have fuck, probably a dozen people flying in from Vegas, um, people from all over the state, from the east side, north, south, wet. Like, I, I'm just so grateful that I have such a great support group. And I'm so happy and humbled to know how many people genuinely support me and want me to do well. You think you're going to shake hands after this fight? I'm sorry, say again? You're going to shake hands with Carl Dean after the fight? No, no, I no, I have no, I have no respect for him. I will never, I wish nothing good for, for, you know, it's very personal when you tell me, you know, that's the thing. And, you know, he talks shit and all, like he was talking, you know, Jane, he did an interview with somebody and they're saying, oh, he's soft. Like, cause I said it on a podcast, like Carl came to my house. Like I invited him over. We freaking we, uh, we ate edibles, him and his wife. Uh, we had dinner at my house, you know, when he first got here. Cause he's like, Jay, I don't know anybody around here. You want to hang out? And I was like, all right, bet come over. So they come over, we kick it. And I said that on another podcast, he cropped that piece of, like, oh, this soft ass bitch. Like, oh yeah, he can fight. Like, I just don't, I don't like that shit. Snake shit to me. Now, if we're making 50 grand in this fight, sure, let's fucking run it. Let's, let's go. But there's no win, you know, coming from this fight. There's no financial gain coming from this fight. I'm getting paid less than $2,000. Like, this fucking sucks. But you know what? For, for someone to try again, he, in his head, and not to mention he's a fucking idiot, he thinks he found a chink in my armor that he's going to be able to explode. And uh, it's <laughs> – you know what? Even if he does – I, I have no respect for this guy. I, I, wish him no, I wish him nothing good going forward. Now, I'm not touching his gloves. I'm not shaking his hand. If he wins, I'm not telling him good job. I'm just walking out of the I'm not going to be disrespectful. But I'm not going to be respectful. Does it change your game plan at all if you have genuine animosity towards the guy? No. I'm a professional. Um, I do the same thing. I have, I have the same game plan as I do every single fight. I'm going to hit him first, hit him harder than he hits me. And, you know, whoever goes down, goes down, man. This is an MMA fight, you know, and this is, you know, in, in a sense, it's a street fight, man, because <laughs> wait, I don't like this guy. And he doesn't like me for whatever reason. I've never done him wrong. I've only done him well. But, you know, he's made up these stories in his head. This is how fucking dumb he is. He, he's made up stories in his head to make me look out to be the bad guy. When in, in realistic, he's the one that did the, the crazy shit at the gym, got kicked out. And then, you know, fucking turn around and try and stab me in the back. Fuck this motherfucker. He's like, is he, are there, have there been a lot of guys who've gone kicked out of Extreme Couture? Is he, was he, you know, that bad that they had to kick him out? There, there's, I've been at Extreme Couture since 2009. There have been less than five people kicked out of this gym. I mean, I, so the type of thing where like he knocked out, you know, a sparring partner or? No, no, no. I mean, that happened. That happens all the time. I mean, like I said, I don't want to get too in depth in this business. It's a long time. Uh, uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, he harassed somebody that isn't even a fighter that was watching practice in the gym. And he, he harassed them and threatened them multiple times, and he was under the influence. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Fair enough. Um, you're moving back up to 155, right, this fight? Yes. Does that help you at all with training and not having to worry as much about the weight? I mean, I mean, weight cuts suck no matter what, you know, your, your, your training, your training, it, it just changes uh, depending on the weight class. Uh, yeah, it helps. But I mean, mostly I want to go back up to 155 uh, because I've been, you know, COVID's been rampant, this variant, you know, I, I, I was sick in December, I was sick in January. So, you know, a couple of those times I haven't been able to get in the gym, you know, so it's like, fuck. And not, not that I'm not in shape or anything, but you know, that, that, uh, you know, so again, some of the days I got to stay out of the gym uh, because being sick and shit. So I wasn't able to put in the extra hours and burn the extra calories to get down to 145. Not to mention cutting to 145 literally probably takes years off my life. So I'm not doing it for $2,000. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest, Pete, TWC, you're lucky I'm cutting to 155 for $2,000. I guess I'm not trying to make jump to any conclusions. With this fight, are you, is it re, are you really just trying to use this fight in the long term to get back to the UFC? Because it feels like, I mean, clearly you're not here for the money. Obviously, there's animosity between you and Carl Deaton, but you're talking about not cutting weight. So is this really just this fight necessary for the long term? 
Uh, you know, uh, Carl, and okay, re regardless of how I feel about Carl, like I don't like him as a person. I think he's a piece of shit. He's a tough fighter. He's really tough. He's 15 and five. He, you know, he just had a split decision loss in the PFL. PFL is one of the biggest organizations in the world. You know, Michigan and Lansing are getting a UFC caliber fight, you know, for, 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 for pennies, you know? So, you know, I know the UFC is going to look, Sean Shelby, you know, Mick Maynard, they're going to look and be like, look, this guy's not trying to fight cans. You know, it's like, there's a lot of guys, what happens is they get cut from the UFC. They're like, all right, we need to rebuild our confidence. So they go and they find somebody that has a losing record or a 500 record. They smash two or three of those guys, and then they hope to get back. I'm jumping right into the fucking briar patch. I'm jumping right head first into the fire. You know, I'm going against it. Carl Dean, he's fucking strong. He's a great wrestler. He's a power puncher. He likes to brawl. Like, this has, this has fight of the year written all over it, and we're only, only going to be in February. You know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not looking for easy padding fights. Like, like I said, I'm 32 years old. I need to expedite my process and get back to the UFC as soon as possible. Fair enough. And just my final question, you know, you train extreme couture. That's been a huge thing for your career. I want to ask about Francis Ngannou and your thoughts on his performance and his performance really just a true evolution of him as an MMA fighter. One, does it raise the general morale of the gym seeing him? And second of all, like what can you say about him sort of using his wrestling to win that fight, which we hadn't seen before? You know, it's Francis is every time Francis fights, we have lockers right next to each other. I see him every single day. He's in here busting his ass in the morning. He's in here busting his ass in the evening. Every time I come to the gym, Monday through Sunday, Eric Nixick, his head coach is here, putting in time, holding mitts, watching film, going over game plan. Like this, <laughs> I said on Twitter, like people don't understand, Francis is still learning. Francis is put, starting to put, starting, let me reiterate, starting to put things together. Wait till, wait till he's a season, you know, Fucking, like, I know he's going, he's having knee surgery. I, I believe I saw on social media that he's having knee surgery now. But he just, <laughs> gone was supposed to be, oh, I have all the answers for Francis. Francis took him down and whooped his ass. You know, it's, I, I, I'm so happy for him. And I'm so happy for the, uh, the coaching staff. Because, again, Eric Nixick has been a big impact on my career and my life over the last 10 years. And to see him, you know, how he's, how him and Francis and Dewey Cooper how they're evolving together is, is, is incredible, you know, and I, you know, when I first met Francis or, you know, what, you know, watch him train, like he's so humble and he's so nice. You couldn't ask for a better human being, you know, for, for somebody and, and a hard worker, you know, I mean, obviously he's, he's physically talented. Look at the fucking guy. He looks like GI Joe. He's like six foot five, 265 pounds and he's shredded all the time, but that only goes so far. This guy's in here putting in the work, putting in the wrestling, putting in the grappling. And again, his coaching staff, Eric Nixick, Dewey Cooper, they're putting in the time with him too. It's not him just doing it by himself. It's a whole effort uh, of, of their whole coaching staff, a whole effort of extreme couture. And yes, I mean, having the strap here uh, is, is awesome, man. I, like I said, I've been in extreme couture since 2009. I've seen, we've had a lot of UFC champions here, and I'm very proud to say that Francis is one of them. Couldn't have said it better. It was a great performance by Francis. Everyone, you can watch the – Justin, the guitar hero, Jane's at Total Warrior Combat on February 5th. He fights Carl Dean. Justin, thank you so much for taking the time. Hey, appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Of course, you too. All right, bye.